I'm about to get started on building a deck in the front of our house. We already have a deck in the back of our house, but the back of our house is south facing. And unfortunately, our trees are not yet mature enough to provide adequate shade, especially during the heat of the summer. So my lovely wife has requested that I build her a deck in the front of the house, which is north facing. This space previously contained a flower garden, which is now long gone, partly because we needed to replace our water main, which runs through its center, right between the two window wells. We also replaced one of our window wells, which is why we have two different window well covers. On the surface, this would be a pretty simple rectangular deck, but I have a few challenges that I plan to address as I proceed. The deck will be set low to the ground. So the framing will be all internal. In other words, I don't plan on using the typical construction of posts, beams, and joists, which is to say, the joists are laid on top of beams where the beams are supported by posts and where the posts themselves are supported by concrete footings. But instead, I plan on supporting the beams directly to the footings using custom fabricated steel supports and the joists will be attached to the faces of the beams and the rim joists. I have two window wells I need to frame around. My current thinking is to build a deck above the window wells and fabricate replacement covers supported by the deck rather than the window wells themselves. If I attempt to build a deck flush with the top of the window wells, the front of the deck will be set too low and the framing will end up below grade. I plan to design and fabricate custom railings that will be secured to the framing prior to installing the decking. So I need to design the railing along with the design of the deck itself. Finally, I have two additional design challenges on the west end of the deck, which is also the right-hand side of the deck facing the house. The first is the result of the west side of the west window well being very close to the front steps. The second is due to the curves we added to the driveway end of the front walk in order to give it more interest when we replace the front steps, not anticipating the desire to add a deck at a later date. The first step is to set up my laser level and measure the height difference between the surface of the driveway and the top of the various features that are within our deck, such as the front steps, the window wells, and the sidewalk. This will help decide the final height of the deck. Next, we make reasonably accurate measurements of the desired length and width of the deck, along with the features I need to design around. Once I have most of my measurements, I'll make a drawing and start the detailed design process. I added all the features to a drawing that scaled reasonably accurately. So you can see here I have my, my east window well, my west window well, my front steps and the front walk. Of course, this is all one big piece of concrete with an intermediate step right here. I also have a, a piece of conduit, where, which I use for running a, my internet into the house via this uh, sp sprinkler control box. And then here's my gas meter. And then I'm just showing uh, garden timbers that actually encase a uh, a flower garden off to the left here. Down below, I'm actually showing all the elevations that I got from using my laser level. So this line, dotted line here, was the, the actual line that, the, that I had for the laser that I measured down from. This, this line here is the brick. And then the line along here is the driveway, you can see. This line represents the top of the east window well and this line represents the top of the west window well. And you can see here that the top of the 
west window well is only four and a half inches above the driveway. This elevation represents the sidewalk starting from the driveway and working back toward the house. <clears throat> Next, I'll show, I'll show the framing I came up with. So there's, there's the actual deck. So I have two two by eights from what I'm calling my rim joist in the front. I'm not using the term beam for everything, just trying to keep things a little bit unique. And then I have my center beam, which again is two two by eights. And then I have the rim joists out on the left side here. And then of course up on the right hand side. So we elected to put in an offset to, to accommodate this curve in the front walk. And then, of course, I framed around the window wells rect rectilinear. And the one thing that may not show up real well is there's a joist that goes from the basement wall out to this offset, and in part to support this double joist that you'll see here. So if now if I show, show the location of the piers, I actually have eight piers. So three down the center of the of the center beam, centered as you can see, pretty, pretty straightforward. And then I have three by the rim joists, and you'll see that those are actually offset in. And the reason for this is I didn't want, I don't want the piers to be exposed on the side of the driveway. One, they'd be unsightly. And two, if we ever decide to pour a, a, a concrete driveway, the, you know, the, the piers would then interfere. So, so I elected to, to, to set those in instead. And what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to fabricate custom steel brackets that'll look about like so, that'll be attached to the concrete and then bolted directly to these, uh, the rim joist in this case, and this, the beam, center beam in this case. But I did have this challenge that I, I struggled with and, and eventually decided on pouring two additional piers. One, just to support the other end of this joist. So remember, one's going to be attached to the basement here, to the concrete. I had to support the other end just to support this corner. But then I got this double, I got this double joist that's supporting these additional joists. And that just didn't feel right supporting that on a single joist. So I decided I'm going to add an extra pier and a bracket to support the other end of that double joist. It looks like a lot going on there, but I just didn't know how else to do it. So that's what I ultimately elected to do. I'm also going to have a handrail which will cons consist of these posts that'll be attached directly to the joists. And if I add the handrail, this is nominally what it's gonna look like, the, the detail of which hasn't been completely decided yet, but this is kind of a, a starting point. I'll, uh, I'll have a, a handrail made out of steel that I'll weld up and it'll be attached directly to the to the joists. This is an idea what the what the decking will look like. So I'm going to picture frame this deck. So I got this this piece going around the perimeter, and I'm just I'm just showing what, you know pieces of it, so it didn't get too busy. And then the decking itself. So the the front edge of the deck is set such that I have an integral number of deck boards from the front of the deck all the way across. And they should end up integral on both this west window well and the east window well. So the, the framing is such that I have five and a half inches difference between the two so that they should, it should work out just about exactly. And the same is true with the, with the house itself. So if this works out perfectly, I should just be able to lay the decking all the way across, right up to the house. Now, just to hedge my bets a little bit, I'm going to set this rim joist toward the house 
just a little bit, probably like a half inch, so that I don't accidentally end up with a with a tiny sliver of decking up against the house. You know, at the most, I may have to may have to trim off a little bit. So I, I'm I may wait until I install the decking to install this joist and the one it's attached to. So I may I actually may put the decking down up till this point before I actually figure out where where this one's going to go or or get started on the decking at least and get a sense for what that dimension will be. So the other thing that's nice about doing this in a CAD drawing is then you can add your dimensions. Now you can see here that I went a little nuts with this. Let me turn off the labels. So you can see here I got I got a lot of dimensions just to start getting a feel for what it is. And you can and measure from your drawing what the various lengths of each of each of the boards are and so on. This this will prove useful once I actually get started. I created a separate drawing to show the detail of the framing used to support the picture framing and also my my handrail. So I'm showing the doubled up 2x8s for my rim joist and then the actual individual joists and I'm referring to this one on the end as also as a, as a rim joist. You can see I got I got the fascia shown. This is about nominally half inch. I got that attached in this case. So if I show my my railing post this is a, a location it'll be. So I'm going to custom fabricate a handrail out of steel where the posts themselves will be made out of one and a quarter inch tubing fastened directly to this joist. I got the dimensions set so that the, the picture frame decking is set so that the post falls on the gap between the picture frame decking and the decking itself. So all I'll need to do is notch make a small notch in both the picture frame decking and the actual decking around the perimeter. So you'll notice that the decking is supported by the joists and this joist here at the very end. The picture frame decking is supported by this joist and by a filler that I'll cut to width that'll be laying flat will be secured to the rim joist and this joist from either side by screws after the handrail is installed. Th th this front picture framing is supported by the joists just like the regular decking plus by this rim joist. If I add the dimensions I can easily pick off what the where the dimension is to, to, to place this joist and also where the handrail needs to be installed relative to the front, for example. In the next video, I'll show how I install the ledger board. If you found this video useful at all, please give me a like below and comment either way. If you'd like to follow along with me as I complete my deck project, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you do, you'll get to see me in the next video.